We face each other as God intended. Sportsmanlike. No tricks, no weapons, skill against skill. Here's your look at the new McFarlane Toys, The Princess Bride, Fezzik. Fezzik the Giant was employed by Vizzini. He doesn't have a problem with subverting the law, but doesn't like to fight dirty. He is friends with Inigo. The two like to play rhyming games with one another from time to time at the ire of their employer. Fezzik is very tall and big, so at a very young age, his parents made him fight competitively. He is from Turkey, but met Vizzini in Greenland, where he was employed. Designed with ultra-articulation for up to 22 moving parts for a full range of posing and play. Coming from one of my favorite 80s fantasy films, before we get a closer look at Fezzik, suppose we should probably figure out how tall the figure stands. I'm going to grab my ruler and put it right to the very top of Fezzik's head. The figure seems to stand at a little over nine and a half inches, but only by a hair. I guess that works out to be a figure that's about 24 centimeters in height. This certainly would have made for a funner comparison if I didn't have problems with the figure, but we're going to slide over Fezzik just a little bit to free up some space and bring in the previously looked at and disappointed Swamp Thing. I brought Swamp Thing in just because I like the look of the figure. Still, again, it's a bummer that he has problems with the tops of his one thigh. But just to kind of put things in perspective, if you're looking at Fezzik, he goes to about the shoulder of Swamp Thing. Yeah, Fezzik's a pretty tall figure. On to now Fezzik's accessories. And starting first, like with other McFarlane releases, he comes included with a display stand, but what's obviously different here is the fact that they actually did put the Princess Bride down below. And I would imagine the other characters that we are going to be getting so far advertised on the back of the packaging, there's Fezzik, the Dread Pirate Roberts, Inigo Montoya, and Princess Buttercup, ironically called Red Dress version, leading me to believe that they're probably going to do several lines of these. So at least we do get ourselves a branded stand, not for DC Multiverse, not certainly for Mortal Kombat. But you can imagine Fezzik in a Mortal Kombat game. He'd probably just be smashing people's brains with rocks and offering them peanuts. Speaking of peanuts, how's that for a segue? The figure comes included with a peanuts, a lone peanuts. Anybody want a peanut? I like the fact that they would have actually included this as a nice little nod to the movie. Although, sadly, there's really no place that you can put the peanut. I mean, yeah, you could put it in his hands. By the way, for the record, he does only have one open hand. You sort of could rest it, I suppose, inside the palm of his hand. Let's just do that right now with a figure. Just kind of twist the hand just a little bit. Really stubborn joints also, I might have to say, too, on the hands here. And sort of can just take the peanut and fit into his hand. That's guaranteed going to be lost. I It's been a while since I've also had a shelled peanut, but I feel like the scale of the peanut is way too big. Am I the only one that thinks that that peanut should be a lot smaller? Are we just generally having the consensus that we're spending way too much time talking about the size of the peanut? I think that's way too big of a peanut. But to be fair, either way, it's definitely going to be an accessory that's lost right away if you're not too careful. One thing that certainly won't be lost, though, with the figure, another segue over to the other accessory comes included with. Let's just get his feet straight just a little bit here. The figure also comes included with a rock. Now, he obviously has this in the movie when he's fighting the Dread Pirate Roberts. Skill against skill, mind you, he's got a big giant rock in his hand. Uh, you know, if I was a stickler, I could certainly say I think the rock is a little more rounder in the movie, but uh, are we really going to be a stickler when it comes to the rock that comes included with Fezzik? Uh, Fezzik, though, I will say about his rock, sort of looks like a giant meteorite. It's textured in such a way that it fits only one way in his hand. I'm going to draw your attention to right here. See, so it's a little bit flatter right here. That actually is, seems to be the best place to fit into his hand. If you take like the rock, for example, and try to fit it in any other place than that flat part that I mentioned already, you're going to struggle trying to get this into his hand. It almost even doesn't seem like his hand is molded to the right size to actually accommodate the rock. In actual fact, though, if you take this smooth part right here that I'm indicating right now, you can actually quite easily fit that in between his hand and his... Now, again... On a normal person, that would be probably a giant boulder. And yet in Fezzik's hands, he's holding it like it's a pebble. But yeah, it holds fine. I mean, it's not going to be going anywhere. But it really helps to actually use the smoother end of the rock. See right there? Right around there? It's definitely a more narrow end of the rock. And it fits a lot easier in his hand that way. Let's go ahead and take that and put it up just to the side for one moment. We'll, go, we'll come back to that. I'm sure we'll bring it in for final looks. Because really, that's the only other accessory other than the little tiny peanut. Way too big for a peanut. Way too big for a peanut. Spending more time talking about the peanut. 
Getting a closer look at Fezzik's head, uh, as it certainly goes for a likeness to the late Andre the Giant, I think they have done a well enough job of sculpting a decent likeness to Fezzik. My only offered up criticism, I would say, is when it comes to the head sculpt, I feel it's a little too dirty. I mean, in the movie, he's not that dirty in a complexion. You could say, okay, he's got a little bit of stubble down lower in his chin area, but I find he's got too much airbrushing happening here in his eyes, and even around the areas of his cheeks, that it makes his face too, look too dingy and dirty. Um, the, the skin tone isn't terrible. It's a little too pale, which seems to be something that they're doing a lot lately with their McFarlane DC multiverse figures, giving them really pale complexion. Just recently noticed that, actually with the Batman figure. Really, really pale complexion. I can I can overlook that, certainly when it comes to Fezzik here. But what I can't overlook is the fact that they just added way too much airbrushing around the areas of his face, clearly the areas around his cheek, and very noticeably around the area of his mouth. The, they, at least to his credit, gave him an expression as opposed to just giving him a neutral face. You can kind of see, clearly can see, you can see the top of his teeth, and maybe not as clearly, you can see like the bottom of his teeth slightly behind that. Like Again, I like the head sculpt. I just think the paint sort of lets it down a little bit. Now, in the movie, obviously, Andre the Giant carrying over something he would have in professional wrestling, these big giant sideburns. Look at the size of those pork chops. They are sculpted well to match the sculpting of his curlier hair, which has a really nice use of brown that they've added, like a dark chestnut brown. In some of the ways, the way that the light is hitting it, it almost looks like there's a little bit of a lighter brown that they've added in there, but I think it's actually just more so the fact that the hair is shinier. Face is good, yes. Again, I just don't have a little bit of an issue when it comes to the, the amount of airbrushing that they've done to the eyes. But overlooking that, I think it's a really good dead-on likeness to Fezzik from the movie. As for the rest of his body, of course, he's got the top tunic here that's belted off with kind of a full leather-looking plastic belt that wraps around, of course, the full... Can you imagine how big this belt would be on Andre the Giant? I really should have researched this earlier on to know what size. Somebody, I'm sure, can look at it right now and let me know down below in the comment section. What size pants... Andre the Giant War. I would probably imagine that they'd be bigger than several of us put together. But yeah, the sculpting of the belt is good, as well as the texturing that they've done to the tunic. And while there doesn't seem to be a whole lot of extra coloring that they did add to it, I think most of it is actually just the gray plastic. At least it's sculpted rather nicely. You can see as well the way that they would have tied up the tunic here in Andre. Would he have been able to dress himself for this role? I guess they probably would have helped to assist to get his like big boots on. What size footwear would Andre... I don't want to really spend this entire review talking about the size of clothes that Andre would have wore, but I didn't put in perspective of just how big this character is when you have him scaled next to Inigo Montoya against next to even the Pirate Roberts when he's first battling Pirate Roberts, how big Andre actually is on screen. Um, now, his sleeves... Actually, one thing I did want to mention about his sleeves... I don't mind the length that they've done, but one, one thing I found already, and you may have already noticed this when we were trying to put the peanuts, the oversized peanut into his hand, is it really does limit any bit of posability when it comes to his wrist. I can barely move him. He does have like this very awkward hinge joint that we have seen with releases before. It's generally these mega scale size McFarlane figures where they have this sort of awkward joint that if you bend the hand just the wrong way, here it's okay, but if you bend the wrist back this way, it sort of looks like he's got a bulging bone that's sticking out the bottom of his wrist. I'm not crazy about that, honestly. I wish they could have actually just used the ball joint. I don't think the hand needed to hinge back and forth, or if anything, if they just put the ball joint there, I feel like the hand would have just been able to naturally hinge back and forth without having an awkward bone sticking out the bottom of his skin. Ouch, that looks really painful. Sculpting on the legs is done quite well, sort of using a two-tone of the more darker blue and then a purple that's sort of a neighbor to that like the coloring and the sculpting of the pants. And again, like down to the boots here. If you do have any issues with Andre, which I don't have so far, this one ankle, unfortunately, I've probably already cursed myself by saying this. The ankle is a tad on the loose side. This, this side is. This side's not as bad, but at least the figure does have peg holes on the undersides of his feet. Going back to a point I mentioned probably in an earlier mega scaled figure, it might've even been Violator's review. Uh, like the display stands, I just, again, I wanted to bring like the display stand in. That's a regular size display stand. And again, like the size of Fezzik, both when you factor in the size of his feet and just like the sheer size of the figure alone, I really think they could come up with a larger scale stand, something bigger than this. 
doesn't have to be double the size, but maybe even half the size, a bit bigger for the mega scale scaled figures like the Violator we looked at earlier. And of course, when it comes to characters like Swamp Thing, Swamp Thing needed a bigger display stand. Also, I would say the same here with Fezzik. Let's go through the articulation now for him. It's starting first with his head, obviously. We're going to rotate the head all the way around. It's actually on a pretty decent ball joint. While I thought there may have been limitations by the size of the sculpting of his hair, it, it seems like actually I can move the head quite easily back down as well, and also back and forth. As for the arms, the arms quite comfortably can come out. Again, I really thought there was going to be limitations by the sculpting of the top of the shoulder, not to mention just the size of the tunic that he's wearing. But no, I mean, you can even see like the arms tuck nicely on the inside cavity of his torso. You can take the arms and rotate them all the way around. The figure does have a hinge in the elbow. Again, one of the problems with these bigger scale figures is that they really do trim back the amount of posability. So instead of having a double hinge joint, you're only having a single hinge joint. Andre's not really a ninja type of character. Fezzik, I can't imagine putting him in some crazy looking poses. As long as he's able to swing a rock, that's as much as I really need. So I guess really the argument of having only a double hinge or a single hinge in favor of a double hinge Again, what are you really going to be doing other than just bending the figure's arm? I mean, 90 degrees is more than enough to swing like a set of rock. Don't quote me on that. Uh, the hands, again, stubborn. Stubborn back and forth. And again, ugly a little bit because you have these big joints that stick out the bottom when you hinge the hand back and forth. The figure doesn't have any torso articulation, at least none that I can find, unless the joint's just super, super tight. But I would imagine, like, I don't think they probably would have put a torso articulation in the first place. One thing you may notice, though, is that there's some additional padding that they put in here. I don't know if the reasoning for this is they're probably going to want to use the torso underneath for something else. While this is harder plastic, clearly up here, this seems like a more softer plastic. They may have also done it too so that the shoulders would be able to actually roach it, rotate back and forth. Because if they sculpted this all in, you probably would have a harder time of getting the joint actually in there. So that's probably one of the reasons why they use the softer plastic. Then we can kind of move down to the legs here. The legs are on ratcheted joints. There's the crotch area there of Fezzik. You can move them forward, but that's only about it to what you can get. You can also move them back to about there as well. The figure has a single hinge in the knee. And again, it's a bit on the ugly side, but to be fair, you're really not going to be seeing it. How often are you really going to be looking at Fezzik's under knee like this? Oh, somebody just put up their hand in the back viewing audience. Oh, you are? Okay. Other than you, I don't know anybody else that's probably going to be doing that. There is a little articulation in the boot, so you can rotate those back and forth. And again, when it comes to the feet, you can move them back and forth, at least to the credits, guaranteeing longevity when it comes to Fezzik being able to stand. They did put ratcheted joints in the ankles. See that? So it does allow, granted, a tighter joint moving it back and forth. But I feel one that's going to last a little bit longer when you have this guy on your shelf. He does have an ankle pivot, so that's good. And the figure does have toe articulation as well. The only thing I would say, though, about Fezzik, short of the fact I feel like the coloring on his face, I think, is way too dark. The head sculpt and the likeness to the late Andre the Giant, as well as the character Fezzik that he played in The Princess Bride, is there. I'm certainly not denying that. But again, like I think the, the darker gray really ruins a little bit of the likeness there. If they had just pulled that back a little bit, I think you much would have got a much nicer looking portrait for Fezzik. Now, again, like we are getting right now, Fezzik's been released, but advertised again on the back of the packaging. Don't worry, don't worry. I'll show you guys at the end in final looks. There's also the Dread Pirate Roberts, Anigo Montoya, and Princess Buttercup in red dress. I know I probably will be saying this again in final looks when Fezzik is spinning around on the rotisserie. But I'm surprised actually that they released this guy first and not just test the waters with a Dread Pirate Roberts and Anigo Montoya maybe first, or maybe Dread Pirate Roberts, Princess Buttercup. Again, Test the waters, see if there's public and collector's interest before investing as much to release Fezzik first. Releasing Fezzik could be a trickier call to make because if the, if no one's interested in picking up the Princess Bride figures, I feel like they've wasted more time, more resources, and more money to produce a figure for a line that nobody's interested in. I personally am interested, but I gotta feel like maybe the smarter, safer route would have been done to release Pirate Roberts first and then another figure along with him. Smaller figures, smaller producing of, of you know plastic and material wise. Test the waters on there first before releasing a much bigger figure like the like the likes of Fezzik here. Yeah. 
really nice looking Fezzik from the folks over at McFarland Toys. If you're a big fan of the Princess Bride, a personal favorite of mine, great figure to be picking up. Advertised once again on the back of the packaging. Oh no, he's going to be saying this again. Advertised on the back of the packaging. Excuse me. Thank you. Underneath the oversized frame needed to present Fezzik's portrait. Smaller portraits you'll see of Dread Pirate Roberts and Nego Montoya. You killed my father prepared to die. Stop saying that. And Princess Buttercup. Smaller font below her. Red dress. The fact that they would even put red dress below Buttercup makes me think that they're probably going to be releasing more than one Buttercup. Still, though, I would go back to a point I mentioned just almost what, a few seconds ago, just before we wrapped up things and we put Fezzik on the spinning turntable. Why not release any one of the smaller scale figures first to test the waters? Now, likelihood, McFarland Toys have already produced all of these figures because, of course, it takes a little bit of time producing the mold and they probably would have done them all at the same time and then produced only and manufactured, I should say, only Fezzik first and released him first. But again, I still would have said released Dread Pirate Roberts as the entryway, the introduction of what McFarlane is capable of doing for Princess Bride, and then just maybe holding off on Fezzik. Again, I don't know what the turnaround time was for producing this line. I'm sure they already have inventory of all of the figures, and we're simply just getting Fezzik first. But I think Fezzik might be the harder sell for anybody that's just getting into collecting figures, and you know, oh, it's Fezzik. Where's all the uh, Where's all the rest of the Princess Bride figures? Oh, I don't, I don't see any other figures. Well, I don't know if I want to get Fezzik in case the line gets clearance, and then McFarland decides not to release the other ones. Yeah, that's my thought as well. I would have maybe done Dread Pirate Roberts first, maybe a Negro Montoya to go along with that. Ah, sure, why not? We throw in Princess Buttercup, and I would have released Fezzik afterwards. Just, again, to kind of test the waters. What do I know? I'm just the guy that's behind the camera talking about figures. But what do you guys think of Fezzik? Decent-looking likeness to the late Andre the Giant. Comes with a oversized peanut. We're still going to talk about the oversized peanut. We're not going to talk about the oversized peanut. The peanut's way too big, if you ask me. Does also come include with a rock, which is the thing I'm going to be displaying with the figure anyways. But what do you guys think of Fezzik? Let me know down below in the comments section. Have you guys ever seen The Princess Bride? One better question to maybe to ask you, the viewing audience, for your video question for today. What's your favorite 80s fantasy film? Let me know down below in the comments section. I, this is pretty high up there, along with Legend. Love, love Legend. Maybe we might even get our Legend line. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's just see if we can actually get the rest of Princess Bride first. What was your favorite 80s fantasy film viewing audience? Let me know down below in the comments section. And hey, now, if you are new to this channel, you're enjoying the content that you're seeing, Make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. Turn on the bell notification. Anybody want a peanut? And make sure you keep your peepers peeled. While we have wrapped up things for Fezzik, there will be more reviews of McFarlane Toys stuff coming your way. So make sure you're keeping your peepers peeled. As always, guys, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.